here we go. What's up, everybody? My name is Mike from the Super Wheeler Bros, and we are back with another review of the fourth season of Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. This time we are looking at episode number 20, entitled Farewell Cruel World. So let's get right into this episode. Once again, it is a fantastic episode. And while this episode was short on action, it was extremely high on the drama. The clock is ticking this week for Daisy and Simmons to get the team out of the framework, but not everyone is ready or willing to leave. I thought that the emotional beats were really strong and quite heart-wrenching this episode. This episode was all about leading the team to the exit from the framework and everyone's movements were pitch perfect. Coulson was ready to leave, but it was his getting shot and potentially dying that actually allowed and pushed May over the edge to follow his lead. And the reunion finally in the real world was well worth the wait as it definitely tugged at the heartstrings. Simmons pleading with Fitz to come back to her as he coldly shoots her in the leg and prepares to execute her for murdering his father in the framework was actually really intense and just heartbreaking. It really was. Luckily, Radcliffe was there to save the day and save Fitz and get him through the exit because I was really, really worried that they wouldn't get Fitz through there. And that's... That's good storytelling, that's good writing, because they really make you believe that Fitz is just too far gone to get him out. And I just thought that that was really well executed. Just as powerful was Mac's decision to stay with his daughter Hope, despite Daisy's pleas to leave. His speech as to why he was staying was just so touching. It's totally relatable and understandable. I, I, I mean, could you leave your daughter even if you knew it was fake? It's so hard to discern what you would do in that situation, but I totally sympathize and understand why that decision was made. It sucks because we don't know Mac's fate, but what a really just, it is just a rough moment, you know, and, and, and Chloe Bennett was so good in that scene. Just saying she doesn't want to lose him and that she, you know, he's important to everybody on the team and he's like family and just, man, just such a well acted episode. You know, it's amazing just how good these actors have become and how comfortable they are together that they can just pull these performances out of each other. It's really, really good. This also raises like just plenty of questions, mainly if Mac has condemned himself to a death sentence because he wanted to remain in the framework, I mean, does that mean he has no choice but to die now? One way or another, something's gonna happen. I did love the interloping timeline between the framework and the real world, showing what was happening in the real world as the framework story progressed. It really propelled the tension and race against time feel, and I was glad that we got a little bit of interaction with Yo-Yo and the other team members and just how much they are sacrificing to try and keep Daisy and Simmons in the framework in order to save their team and stop Ada from achieving her goal. Now, once everyone has woken up in the sub, we are immediately aware that everyone has retained their memories and actions that they have partaken in in the framework. And I thought that was a really interesting idea because, yeah, they know who they are, but it does seem to affect them a little bit, as it really does for Fitz. He's the one that, who seems to have been affected the most. He's both profoundly affected by his misdeeds, realizing that he's the reason that Mace is not alive for real, not just in the framework. And somehow, I don't know how, doesn't make a whole lot of sense yet, but he's retained his affections for Ada slash Ophelia as she's building her body throughout the end of this episode in the real world from Fitz and her completing the Project Looking Glass in the framework, which she's completely unhinged at this point. She is unhindered from anything that could have been confining her from her programming, so she she's unhooked. She's out of the Matrix at this point. And now 
We don't know what's going to happen. And this is probably my biggest issue with the episode, and my only real issue with the episode. I don't understand how Fitz would be in any way drawn to Ada, as she put him in the framework, unwillingly, and caused his behavior that has him so distraught. I don't understand that. She is the reason that he did all of these horrible, horrible things, because of how she changed him in the framework. By changing his father's death, which by the way, he was a bastard, so... That affected him, and I don't understand the affinity there. I don't know if it's just conditioned or brainwashed or what, but I didn't really like that. Plus, what the hell was with that teleportation move that Ada pulled off with Fitz in tow? I, what? <laughs> this was supposed to be a wow moment, and it just left me saying, Huh? <laughs> I don't know, man. I, I don't know if it's... Darkhold magic or what it is. I mean, obviously we've seen powers like that in the show before, you know, Gordon did it in season two. He was a teleporting inhuman, but I just don't, I don't understand where it's coming from. She wanted to be a real person, what and how. Hopefully we'll get some answers next week. Because as of right now, it was just kind of like a, okay, kind of moment. I would have also liked to have seen a better send off for Ward. Now, though, we don't know that it's the last time that we're going to see him, but the way that they gave Trip such a welcome send-off and such a, a heartfelt send-off and the hug between he and Daisy, I get a feeling that might be the last we see of him. Either one of them, honestly. That definitely makes me sad because I want to see both Trip and Ward continue because, to me, they're integral parts of the show, and while they weren't a part of this show until the last few episodes this season. I thought that they were really important parts of the show, but even more so, I just feel like it's a missed opportunity because they're both awesome. And like I said before, this ward is actually interesting while being a good guy. So <laughs> we really could use that. You know, we got rid of the Bobby and Hunter and who knows what's going to happen with Mac. You know, it'd be nice to retain somebody. Overall, I absolutely loved this episode again. I had that one complaint right at the end. That That's about it. So if I'm going to score this week's episode of Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. It just missed the perfect score this week. Remember I've said that they haven't given me any reason to shake my faith, and they still haven't. I just don't understand the way that ended. Now, maybe I'm wrong for going a notch below than the 10 this week, just because maybe this is something that is not going to immediately be answered, and it's something that will be answered in a future episode, and it could retroactively make this a 10. But as of right now, it left me with a feeling of saying, huh, instead of, oh my god, wow, holy shit. I didn't get any of that. I got, what? So we'll see what happens. It seems like next week, though, our team is in serious trouble, especially Mac, as the sub seems to be going down and water is quickly filling the room where Mac is being held. Now, with only two episodes left, I can't wait to see how this season will conclude. It has been truly excellent. It really, really has. And the big rumor is that Ghost Rider will be making a return appearance to help the crew in the final episode. So... That will be a great way to come full circle with this season. I hope that that is true, and I hope that we get these final two episodes that are they're just continue the greatness that we've seen in the second half of this season, and honestly, all season long, but especially since the LMD pod started. This show has been fantastic. So two more episodes to go. We're going to see what happens. Tell me what you guys thought of this episode in the comments below. I definitely want to hear your thoughts. If you enjoyed this review and you would like to see more reviews and all of our other segments on the channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button as we've got tons and tons coming to you in the future. And if you like this video, this review, don't forget to smash that like button. I know we can get those likes up. Keep them coming. I greatly, greatly appreciate it. My name is Mike from the Super Wheeler Bros. And as always, my friends, have yourselves a super week.